I'll be back soon to review the second series. Oh wait, I said that? To be perfectly honest, I just about forgot I never made a review on these. And to think I had all this extra footage laying around. Uh, wait, um, I swear I didn't do that. The second series of Five Nights at Freddy's plushies. A very diverse and exciting group of cuddly toys. This is the biggest series we've had so far, with the first series totaling at 8 plushies and the Sister Location series totaling at 8 confirmed so far. Series 2, on the other hand, has 11 toys, its main focus being on the Nightmare characters from Five Nights at Freddy's 4. It also included 2 characters from FNAF 3 and 5 characters from FNAF 2. A bit of a jumble, for sure. So, to start off, we'll be reviewing the easiest to find of these series, the characters from FNAF 4, starting with Nightmare Freddy. When I first saw the Nightmares, I honestly thought they were fan-made jokes. Like, I thought their mouths were duct tape with teeth drawn in. To me, they looked just plain cheesy. This, in my opinion, is the first noticeable dropping point in quality of the FNAF plushies. The first series was undeniably well-made and well-designed, especially for their price. Minus Chica, of course. But the second series is where things have started to get worse. Much worse. And if you want to know my opinion on the third series, just watch my video on them. Spoiler alert, I'm not very happy. The quality is worse in those plushies, even compared to these ones. Now by me saying all this, keep in mind, I'm not just a hater. I truly wanted to love these toys. Now let's get back to it. Nightmare Freddy. As I mentioned, I'm not a huge fan of how they made the mouths of these characters. It seems cheesy, and it doesn't really blend with the character design. One glance at these plushies, and it's difficult to even register this tape-like thing across their mouths as even being their mouths. A big issue I have with Freddy in particular is that his mouth is so, so, so low on his face! Half the time, it's not even visible. At the very least, this isn't an issue with all of them. As you can see, I own two more Freddies, because I like to consider them my little Freddles, next to my big Freddy, which will be reviewed in the future. But even then, the mouths are still too low. One thing I really like and appreciate about this plushie is, though, are his eyelids. A little feature that wasn't even necessary. It has a shiny material, similar to the mouths, which makes it look somewhat metallic. This is definitely a cool feature. A weird thing about this plushie is that we all know Nightmare Freddy is quite dark colored, and yet they used the FNAF 1 Freddy material rather than the darker Toy Freddy material. How lame. Adding to the lameness, Nightmare Freddy was given red eyes, though he actually has orange ones, and despite getting his withering in the front of his snout correct, they utterly failed on the withering on his correct ear. An interesting addition to the plushie was the withering in his torso and back. It's a neat idea, and a neat design, but at the same time, that endoskeleton makes absolutely, positively, no sense. Next up we have Nightmare Bonnie, a literal nightmare for me to find in other words. He was a Toys R Us exclusive, and I live nowhere near a Toys R Us store. Anyhow, this extremely desirable plushie is well worth the find. Unlike Nightmare Freddy, I think this plush pulls off the mouth the best out of all of the Nightmare toys. The withering on him looks much more natural, and less forced, and his eyes are actually the right color. But that's where my praises end. He's purple. Yeah, that's kind of an issue. They also forgot the lighter color on his chin. And I don't really understand the withering with the lighter color. How does that make sense? The lighter color is coming off to show his base color? But why? The plushies can't even follow their own rules. Sorry, Nightmare Bonnie. You're a bit of a failure. Foxy's in the closet! Now this is a pretty nice looking plush. He's got so much going on. Once again, we have some awesome eyelids. This time, making him appear angry or evil. Probably both. His eyes are the correct color, and they're very well designed and look really neat. His eye patch is sitting up on his eye, to appear flipped open, I imagine. There's a pretty intense amount of withering going on, from his ears all the way down to his feet. All of it, in my opinion, looking fantastic. Minus, of course, the weird endo in his torso and back. This is a pretty neat plushie that seems like Funko worked very hard on. I'm not going to say I love it, but I definitely appreciate it. Some things are quite off from the actual character though, like his eye patch, which Nightmare Foxy doesn't even have. The tuft of fur on top of his head, that he doesn't have either. 
And of course that coloring that goes around his eyes and his chin are nowhere to be seen. What I really wish had happened with these plushies is less of a focus on the withering and so many little details, and more of a focus on making these characters unique from the previous ones. Like for instance, making Nightmare Freddy darker with his orange eyes, making Bonnie blue, and giving Foxy his more unique nightmare features. As much as people like to say FNAF characters are all just recolors and copies, this is usually not the case. Look at how different these two Foxies are design-wise. But these plushies almost make it seem like all the characters are just recolors, because that's how Lazy Funko is. Now let's move on to a relatively strange addition, Nightmare Cupcake. Although I consider it strange, this has to be one of the coolest plushies out of all the ones that have been made. Basically everything is on point here. We get some awesome withering, giant teeth that actually look good, and everything is correctly colored. This is definitely one of the best plushies Funko has made of Five Nights at Freddy's, although it might be a tad bit hard to find, as this plushie is a GameStop exclusive, but it's absolutely worth the search. And that concludes our review of the Five Nights at Freddy's 4 plushies. Now let's take a look at the two from FNAF 3. Springtrap, my favorite character of all time. That short snout, silver-eyed, grinning menace. What? Seriously? Short snout? Silver eyes? Grinning? What happened to you, buddy? I'm sorry to say, but this plushie doesn't really look like our guy Springy. He's just a wannabe. I mean, I'll admit, the colors are relatively good. I really like the gray bottom feet. The eyelids are a plus. And the wires are actually really, really cool. But the withering is just so bad. Can you even explain what's going on with his ear here? What is that? And why are his insides pink? Shouldn't they be rusty red? And oh boy, his mouth. Funko, why do you like to put their mouths on the bottom of their chins? It doesn't really look good. So yeah, as you can tell, I was a bit disappointed in this plushie. I don't hate it, but sadly, oh so sadly, I don't love it either. Next up we have Phantom Foxy, the Target exclusive. Talk about an awesome plushie. The metallic looking fur, the crazy cool eyes, and once again, the reuse of the Foxy base. Now I love this plushie, because it's just so darn cool. But the issue here is that he looks nothing like the actual Phantom Foxy character. Yeah, he's dark, but that's pretty much it. Phantom Foxy, as we all know, is basically Withered Foxy that looks burnt up. But this plushie is FNAF 1 Foxy, not Withered Foxy. So this poor, neat looking plush was once again Funko just looking to make some cash. Now it's time for the FNAF 2 characters, starting with the puppet. Now this plushie has never been one of my favorites, and I think other people also agree. A lot of times these puppet plushies have balloon shaped heads or just really wonky heads in general. The body is fantastic. I couldn't have asked for anything better. It's just perfect. But the head attached to it is just not appealing. At the very least, they didn't forget any of his features. He still has his tear marks, his cheeks, etc. But they're far too small. You may be thinking, well, the puppet does have eyes that small. But the thing is, the plushies always make the eyes much, much larger to make them look cute and look like toys. But they didn't do that with the puppet, and he just looks creepy, and not in a good way, because of it. Also, the material they used for the mask is just bad. Using white material like Funtime Foxy's would have been much, much better. Because the seams in this material are just way too obvious, and leave little bumps because the material doesn't stretch. This plushie was not well designed at all, his head at least. Next up, the cupcake from FNAF 2. Once again, a weird plushie to be made, but also a very awesome plushie. This is the best plushie for someone who doesn't collect much merch. Or someone who's cosplaying as Chica. Or heck, even the Night Guard. It's very well made and extremely accurate, down to the blue striped candle. A must have for any FNAF fan. Now, a bit of a controversial character. Mangle, the Walmart exclusive. Right off the bat, many of you are going to say that I'm incorrect, and that plushie is actually Nightmare Mangle. And I used to believe that myself. She has the nightmare-like teeth, she was released alongside the nightmares, but you also have to consider that Mangle does have sharp teeth. 
and the other plushies that were being released during then included other FNAF 2 characters like Mangle. Another confusing thing is this plushie, who many believe is Mangle, but actually, that's Funtime Foxy. The Funtime Foxy character not from Sister Location, but from an earlier game, FNAF World. This Funtime Foxy is the character that later became Mangle after the kids tore her apart. So back to this plushie. There's tons of evidence that this is actually just Mangle. For one, look at her missing eye. As you can see, it's on the same side that Mangle's is. And Nightmare Mangle's is actually on the other side. Another thing to note is that this plushie doesn't have any withering. And all the other Nightmare plushies do. And if you still don't believe me, take a look at this sticker. It plainly says, Mangle. So yes, that was a bit confusing. But at the very least, we have a pretty solid conclusion. Now as for this plushie, I'd say it's quite nice. I love the eyes and the one missing eye. The eyelashes are actually on her eyelid, unlike you, Missy. And she was given a proper lip, also unlike you. Although, weirdly, she's missing her cheeks. But I'm really happy this time they didn't forget her bow. So there's a lot to like about this plushie, but there's also a few minor issues. Like how they forgot her bottom lip and gave her a pink chin. And also, these. Yeah, I'll admit, I did think they were cool at first, but now I really, really don't like them. These are knee joints, and they're a cool design, but absolutely no other character was given them, so they just look stupid here. As for her silver-colored arms, I think that's a nice touch. It at least makes her look a bit more like Mangle. But what I really think they should have done is made her entire body silver, and maybe have one foot bottom white. I think that would have been a lot closer to Mangle. And, oh yeah, inaccurate. Let's party with the Toy Chica plush. Now that is adorable. I've said this many times to people who know me, that I love this plushie. She has issues, I'll admit, but you can't deny that adorable little face. And those darling little feetsies. Seriously, give these to more characters, please. They're just too cute. This design was just so well made, it's almost like Funko was trying to apologize to all of us for that monstrosity. The plushie almost did everything right. Except one thing. Those eyes. Now I know, they're so, so, so cute. But you can't tell me she fits in with all these others. Why did they decide to give her sewn in eyes when everyone else has the rounded poofy ones? Not counting sister location ones because they're oddballs in the first place. She really just looks like a different brand. Sadly, this is kind of depressing, given that the rest of her is just perfection. I'm sorry, Chica. You were almost the best. And now it's time for our last... Oh no. No. Not this monstrosity. It doesn't exist. It's just a bad dream, right? Guys, tell me it's not true! Toy Bonnie. This is the number one worst plushie Funko has ever made of Five Nights at Freddy's. And they've made that alien thing. Some butter. And even this. And yet, Toy Bonnie, the number one cutest character in all Five Nights at Freddy's. You cannot deny that face. Those giant green eyes and big red cheeks. The adorable spooky counterpart. And yet this is the worst plushie Funko has ever made. Even the bearded dragons, which gladly eat these things are scared of this horrible thing. A Hot Topic exclusive goes to show how much Funko likes Hot Topic. With eyebrows so thick it could challenge Chica. With ears inspired by Bat Dog. Teeth so crooked they could scare off a dentist. And altogether, a face that seems to be portraying an expression unknown to man. And that just about wraps up our review for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I also hope you enjoy this clip of a bootleg getting eaten alive. Bye!